Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Rare Classic Cars and the Best of Worst of series. Remains cold as always in the Midwest until the springtime hits here, which hopefully is in a few weeks. Today's actually not that bad today. It's approaching 40 degrees Fahrenheit. But today I thought I'd talk about some best of worst of components. We'll try a new little theme here. And I thought I would talk about, to start this, a worst of component. And that is going to be the GM HEI ignition module. So a lot of people who have watched the channel have heard me talk about the cars that I have. And I always leave, if the car has a points-based ignition system, I leave the points in there. And I honestly have never had a problem with contact points in ignition systems. They tend to be reliable. Yes, you have to replace them. Yes, you have to make sure that they're in tune and functioning appropriately. But I've never had one of those systems leave me stranded on the side of the road. And over the course of my lifetime, I've owned a number of vehicles with electronic ignition. And I think I've been stranded on the side of the road at least four or five times by electronic ignition, but never by points. And that's why I never convert my systems. I will always keep the points-based cars points-based, and I can check the components and make sure they're all functioning. The electronics in the ignition control systems, you can't. And unfortunately, the replacement part quality isn't always that great either. So I've been stranded by, in particular, this GM HEI ignition module on my 91 Cadillac DeVille, an 86 Olds Cutlass Sierra, an 88 Fiero that I had, an 82 Trans Am, 76 Eldorado, and I'm probably forgetting a number of others. But this ignition module was used on the GM HEI systems all the way from the mid-70s until the mid-90s on the 4.9 liter Cadillac V8, which can be the subject of a whole nother video. The 4.9 was the last iteration of the wonderful HT4100, became the 4.5, then became the 4.9 liter V8. So these modules are used on a lot, millions and millions of General Motors cars. And they sit underneath the distributor cap. So you'll see those GM HEI ignition distributors that have the coil on the top. You take that off, you take the cap off, and then you take the rotor off. And then underneath that, you can see usually this little half moon shaped ignition module that sits in the body of the distributor. Now why General Motors would put a solid state component in an area with lots of thermal cycling back and forth, I don't know. Ford had the ignition box that was on the fenders or sometimes on the firewall and you know, arguably be a better location, although they had issues with those too. But these under the distributor I find to be particularly problematic. And again, they're usually half moon shaped, although not always. Like on the Iron Duke four cylinders, they had a bit of a different shape to them. And I think they were only a two prong connector on that four cylinder. Whereas the half moon ones have connectors on either side that you have to unhook. But what happens is over time, these components just degrade and then <clears throat> they get an open circuit in them. And it's effectively like shutting the key off in your car. Now, when you go to restart the car, the car will crank and crank and crank. But if you have a fuel injected car with them, the injectors generally won't pulse. And so it looks like there's no fuel spray coming out. And if you have a car that has a tachometer on it, or you've connected a tachometer to the GM HEI system, uh, there's a second little connector there uh, on the distributor cap. These will not have a tachometer reading when the ignition control module goes dead. So that's one way to tell, in some cases, if it's the ignition control module or if your coil went out. If you crank the car and you have a tachometer and the tach doesn't register anything when cranking, it's generally the ignition module. If the tach registers but it's, nothing's happening, it may be the coil. So these little ignition modules wreak quite a bit of havoc over time. And you're supposed to also, when you put a new one in, you're supposed to put like a heat sink, uh, uh, I guess heat sink gel on the bottom side. They have the, the ignition control module will have an underside that's metal that's supposed to mate up with the metal in the distributor and help transfer heat away from it so that it doesn't overheat 
And these, again, like I said, generally are supposed to come with a white paste heat sink gel, just like computers have, to try to get the heat away from the module. I've seen some cases where the replacements don't come with that packet of goo, if you will, and so they fail very frequently. And even the new ones didn't, didn't fail at, I would say, extended intervals. So what can you do about it? Unfortunately, not much. I was going through a period of time where I thought I would replace them preventatively just because they were old in the vehicles. And I found the new ones actually are less robust in some cases than the old ones. So if you are gonna replace them, my best advice to you would be try to find an NOS part on eBay, even as old as it is. The GM parts seem to last longer than the aftermarket parts. And like I said, this is a critical component. If it's not functioning, your motor's not running or your engine's not running. So you're gonna be left wherever you are. I would say too, one of the things I learned after I had a couple of them fail on me is I always kept a spare in the glove box and the tools to take off the distributor cap to fix it. So usually a flathead screwdriver to get the cap off uh, or a Phillips head and then a Phillips head to get the rotors off, the rotor off. And then it depends on how these are secured. Sometimes they have like little quarter inch, uh, quarter inch screws to hold them into the distributor base. But I always kept like a little wrench, the screwdrivers and a spare module under hood. And I actually used those parts twice in my life when the car died on me and I would go pop the hood and go take the module out and put a new one in. So it's kind of unfortunate because the HEI systems otherwise are quite good. And like I said, they uh, were used on everything from the mid 70s all the way up through the uh, through the mid 90s. And yes, there were earlier GM electronic ignition systems, but the ones that have that module where the coil is integral to the, to the distributor cap, I find to be the most fragile. So I nominate that for one of the best or the worst of components of all time, because I, I actually, when I worked for GM, when I interviewed, I interviewed with a senior leader at General Motors and he was asking me how I got into cars. I told him that when I was in college, I used to fix up cars, 80s era GM vehicles, uh, because they ran bad longer than most cars ran at all. And that was how I made money. Back then you could buy, I call it a grandma car, like a mid eighties car with 20,000 miles on it, cosmetically perfect for about $1,500 if it didn't run quite right. It was, something was a little funky usually on those cars. And the interesting thing was I could end up spending maybe a uh, hundred bucks or less, fix a few engine sensors or vacuum lines and then turn around and sell the car for 3000, something like that, 3,500 bucks. It was a good profit. And so I related this story to him of how I did that. And I told him in particular, these ignition modules were very problematic. And I described the symptoms I just related. Well, he turned beet red. And I said, well, it appears I struck a chord or something. And he said, Yes, you absolutely did. I had one of those cars. I had an 85 Cadillac and it left my wife stranded on the freeway and I swore I would never buy GM again. Well, that gentleman that I interviewed with and whom I related that story to was none other than Dan Ackerson. So true story. I was in his office, related that. And for those of you who have watched this channel, you've also seen me talk about badge engineering and the thumbnail picture of that badge engineering video is a Fortune magazine cover for 1983 where it has all the GMA bodies in it and they're all different but they're all painted the same color and they look the same. I can also say that Dan Ackerson had that framed in his office basically as a lest we never forget uh, item. So that was an interesting conversation to say the least but again thought I would try this best of worst of on specific components can talk about a lot of different ones, unfortunately, either good or bad, that the auto industry used over time. So hope you enjoy. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Check out the best of worst of playlist, and then also check out the car reviews that I'm hoping to restart here as soon as the weather breaks in the Midwest, because I am not taking out any cars when there's a lick of salt on the roads. Until then, and until the next video, thanks again, and take care. Thanks again for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this best of worst of on 
Automotive Components series. To subscribe, please click the circular icon of the 67 Riviera at the top left. If you want to check out some of the videos and playlists, check out the screenshots and thumbnails at the bottom left and right. Thanks again for watching.